Yo, what is going on everybody? It is the Walkthrough King, and here we have a quick fast guide on getting all the intel on D Machine. Now keep in mind this is the pre-season intel and I will talk a bit more about this after the guide itself. And then after we talk about that, I'll go on to show you guys all the intel in the menu as well as play all the audio logs. So if you don't want to go and get all of this in-game yourself, you could just come here and check on everything that there is in-game and listen to all of the audio which explains a lot of the story. Anyways, before getting right into this, if you guys are new here, definitely recommend subscribing to the channel. I always try to post fast guides and get information up as fast as possible with the games I play. As well as if you guys want to support the channel, a like on this video would be appreciated. So, let's get right into this. To start, there are a bunch of radio transmissions and you'll be able to go and get these throughout different games. So, always go over to these spots and check if you have any new ones. There's one over at the pond. That was the one that I just shown and pointed to right there. And the other radio transmission spot is over in Nocturne and Toten on a table. So basically each game just go and check these every so often and you'll be able to get a new intel from them. Moving on, let's focus on the intel pickups that are just readily available at any time. One can be found right next to the power on the left. And another one can be found near the Pack-a-Punch stairs going up towards the power control room. It's just under the stairs on a box. For the next set of audio logs, one can be found on the couch in Nocturne Toten right here. To get another one out of this set, you need to use the Wonder Weapon to shoot down the box for one of the Wonder Weapon upgrades, and the log will be near the destroyed crate where you could pick up the flask. Finally, the last audio log for this set can be gotten from using the Wonder Weapon to suck up the Nova 5 canister. You'll also end up sucking up an audio log from that. Just go ahead and pick it up. Moving on to the final three audio log pickups. One can be found in the showers that you have to get to through the Dark Ether Tunnel. Another one can be found in the weapons lab in the room that you have to use the Dark Ether Tunnel to get into. And the final one is at the the left side of the bunker door going into the facility itself. Now for the remainder of the stuff you'll have to do various things in game to get it. I'll go over all of that right now. To start you're going to want to do a bunch of trials and throughout the trials you will get an intel drop like I'm showing on the screen right now. Once it does say there will be a reward available that is intel just go ahead and go back to the trial machine and pick up that intel. This can consist of different audio logs through the dark ether as well as different documents from people in the dark ether too. Now I don't have gameplay of me getting the other drops but I will explain them right here. A bunch of other drops and documents you will be able to get off of killing the Megatons Elites. Not really sure what you guys call them, but I've seen various names called for them. But yeah, anyways, you just want to kill Elites and you will get Intel drops from them every so often, so pay attention to that. There's actually a ton of different documents that you can get from them, so it may take you a while of killing Elites in order to get all of those documents. Same with the Trials, there are a ton of different ones you can get from doing those, so you may be doing those for quite a bit in order to get all of them. And then finally, for all of the artifacts, all you gotta do is just complete the main easter egg and by the time you are done completing the main easter egg you will have completed and collected all of the remainder of artifacts as most of the artifacts are things that you need to do for the easter egg like when you upgrade the wonder weapon you will get artifacts from that and when you pick up various objective items for the easter egg you will also get those as artifacts anyways that basically completes the guide once you do all of that you get all of the trial intel you get all of the intel from the megaton elite kills you get all the radio trans transmissions from the two different spots as well as you pick up all of the different audio logs that I had shown in the video you should then have all 59 intel so that's all the preseason intel there should be more intel that we get in the future I'm not sure why they didn't drop all of the intel right now but if we do go into the calling card menu and check out the challenges for the intel there are a bunch of challenges that are currently impossible to do right now because there's not enough intel for us to collect so I'm assuming at some point they will drop some more intel once they do I will post another guide on the future intel so just keep that in mind there will be more intel in D machine in the future and once they drop future maps they may also go back to those maps at a different point and then drop more intel in that kind of a cool little thing to continue to explain the story without having to drop a completely new map anyways hope this guide helped you guys out if it did let me know what you guys think of it as well as the different elements of the story that we get explained to us for the remainder of this video I will just play and show all of the intel in the menu so if you don't want to go through and get it all you basically could just see everything there is right here hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm out for now if you guys are new here definitely recommend subscribing and we'll see you guys at the next video peace, peace.
with my adjustments, Dr. Vogler. You may begin recording. Thank you, I already have. This is Ulrich Vogel, director of Project N Station, 7th of March, 1944, 10.03 p.m. Commencing cyclotron test run number 12. Dr. Kurtz, please proceed. All readings are within acceptable parameters. Looks like we are getting the collisions we expected and, um, some interesting patterns are starting to... What was that? I, I, I do not know. Gages are redlining. We have to shut down. My God, what is happening to the air around the collider? You men, back away from that! Kurt, cut the power! I'm trying. Controls are not responding. Ulrich Vogel, director of Project N Station, 12th of March, 1944. Five days have passed since the accident, and I am starting to see it not as a setback, but a breakthrough, literally. The cyclotron continues to operate, apparently without an external power source. We cannot deactivate it, and it is still manifesting the strange phenomenon I call a rift, and Kurtz calls a wormhole. We attached instruments to the end of a long metal pole and passed it through the rift. The readings confirm that somehow the cyclotron ripped through the fabric of space-time. Something lies on the other side. A parallel world, or perhaps a whole universe. But we dare not approach too closely lest we suffer the same fate as the men currently held in our medical clinic. Those men remain in a state best described as living death. Kurt thinks they caught a high dose of some exotic radiation from the other side of the rift. We are checking their blood and tissue samples for traces of rare elements or otherworldly pathogens. Strike team, Weaver here. I understand this has been a lot to take in. Interdimensional breaches all over the world. An infection transforming people into the undead. Not exactly a great two weeks for any of us. Requiem had to react quickly. The same day I was personally requested to run field ops. 
I was ordered to assemble a short list of operatives. That's you guys. Here's what we know. Two weeks ago, a KGB Spetsnaz unit known as Omega Group came here and reactivated its particle accelerator. Their actions caused the outbreak zones we're now seeing around the world. This place is ground zero. Why they did it and to what end, that's what we're gonna figure out. We lost two teams before learning about the site. Make their sacrifices count. Let's get some answers. Strike team, you there? Of course you are, sorry. <laughs> I'm a bit new to all this. Hopefully you don't mind the less than formal approach. Should probably introduce myself. My name is Dr. Elizabeth Gray, head of unnatural sciences. And well, this is about as unnatural a Sunday as I can remember. <laughs> I mean, normally about now I'd be sitting in my lab in Bristol having a good natter with Pip and Sam, two McCorks I work with, over a nice cup of tea. Then, just BAM! This whole thing happens. Next thing I know, I'm drafted by the bloody government to be their representative in this new organization, Requiem. I mean, how could I pass that up? Yes, I know it seems like the proverbial dimension of death has opened right in our back garden, but there's real life to it. And that's including the infected undead. The untapped potential of this discovery, this Ethereum, it could provide us with the tools to grow, evolve even, as a people and a society. There are precious few things in the world more valuable than knowledge. And one of those is the ability to know how and when to utilize said knowledge. Do you know who said that? I did not think so. Dr. Fogel, the scientist in charge of Project End Station, said it to me some 40 years ago when I was employed at this very facility. I know you have your suspicions about me. I hear what your type says about me in the halls. Mein God, is that Dr. Oscar Strauss, former Nazi scientist? They put him in charge of energy research? It is so horrible. <laughs> this energy source, the Germans called it Exo Element One. I call it by its proper name, Ethereum. It has the potential to revolutionize the world in ways we cannot possibly comprehend. I will understand these crystals, and I will learn the how and when to utilize it. I hope, if nothing else, you can appreciate that. All I ask is that if you let me do my job, I will let you do yours. There's no need to be enemies. In fact, one day I hope we can work together side by side. Perhaps we will even consider each other comrades. <laughs> Strike team, do you read me? <sighs> Finally, strong signal. I know the circumstances are less than ideal. But allow me to formally introduce myself. I am Major Mackenzie Carver. My friends call me Mac. You will not. And yes, I am that Major Carver. Most likely all the stories you've heard are true. But that is in the past. I'm a firm believer in living in the now and preparing for the future. As you may well know, I head up Requiem's Containment and Security Division. It's a post I personally requested. Make no mistake, we are at war. This is chess. And the Soviet's Omega Group? <laughs> they just moved their queen into position. This is
is an entirely new dimension we're dealing with. The technology it could potentially offer is unfathomable. We may have nukes, but what if your enemy uses an interdimensional weapon? Something we can't anticipate encounter. This is the new arms race, and we've already fallen behind. Now look, I got nothing against these eggheads and their scientific pursuits. What in hell is this place? Okay, I am rolling. Looks abandoned. Enemy horde? They mean us, Dimitriev. Whatever is down here, Geiger counter does not approve. Kalashny, have you ever seen such machinery? Only in nightmares, Dimitriev. You there, by the big machine, surrender! I said surrender! Vadim, get this on camera. Здравствуйте. My name is Pavel Lazarev. I was sent to contain this mess, and you're going to help me. Comrade, state your name. Kasimir Sikov, Starshina, First Guards Tank Army. I, uh, I hear mechanic. I was told, despite your limited education, you understand German equipment. Well, I scavenge parts from Panzer tanks to keep our T-34s running. How can I be of service, Comrade Lazarev? There is a machine I need you to deactivate. It is called a cyclotron. It leaks strange radiation. You have seen what it does to men. Da, Colonel. What if the same thing happens to me? You will not fail, Zikov. You may not survive, but you will not fail. Understood? Da. My dearest Raisa, it is me, your Casimir. I am sorry to break my promise, but I will not be coming home to you. I have orders to turn off a German machine. Diesel engines, I, I understand. Radios I can't fix, but this. The things down here tried to kill me. <laughs> Perhaps they already have. But not before I finish my mission. I got all the power, but still the machine run. And I swear, sometimes I... I hear it call my name. I am going to try one more thing. If the dead will let me. I have tools, but not many bullets. That Swalach colonel who ordered me down here. I do not do this for him. I do this for the world. For Mother Russia. I do this for you, Raisa. My love for you will never die.
Hey, you know me, don't you? Sure you do. Hopefully. You're part of Weaver's strike team, right? My name's Maxis. I'm a friend. Sorry to start off with some bad news, but friends need to be honest with each other, so... I have reason to believe my communication channels with Weaver are compromised. I would say we do not know who is listening, but even an idiot could probably work it out. Russians. I'm going to assume you can hear me, because the alternative is far too depressing to think about. I'm in the field, but not an actual field that would be silly. It's a churchyard in Romania. Don't worry, there are no vampires. Even if there were, I have garlic. And weapons. To be perfectly clear with you, I have reason to believe the BND have been compromised. So, I have gone what some would term a little bit rogue. It pretty much means I'm operating without authorization or oversight. But since I've spent the last seven years working alongside spies from both East and West, you can hardly blame me. Don't worry. I know my scorpions from my frogs. I was the one. I'm the reason you're here. I gave Weaver the Russian intel about the site in Poland. And told him how much the Russians were interested in it. Right now I'm operating on the theory that they knew that there was something big here. An unnatural power that they could perhaps harness and turn upon their enemies. Something no nation could be prepared for. Hey. Code in. Access granted. Commencing recording. It's late here in Berlin, and it's cold, so I'm going to make this brief. Everything is so much worse than I thought. Sorry, Weaver. How's your day going? I'm going to be frank. I'm not sure who the hell I can trust at the BND. There's an atmosphere. People are leaving. New people are coming in. And I'm not sure how much choice any of them have in it. Point is, something seems to have everyone spooked and looking over their shoulder. Cold War paranoia. <laughs> Who would have thought it? in. Access granted. Commencing recording. I'm hearing that something has lit a fire under the KGB's metaphorical ass. Something they found out about N Station. There are, shall we say, extremists within their ranks that are pushing a new agenda. Their department thinks they might have uncovered something that could be a game changer for the Cold War. All I know for certain is that they've allocated a huge amount of resources to fund a ground operation in Poland. Code 
in. Access granted. Commencing recording. So, this is the last you'll hear from me. For a while. I'm starting to feel that the walls are closing in. If you get my meaning. Two of my contacts have already been exposed. Well, I say exposed, but to be more specific, one started singing as soon as they were detained. The other fell out of a window. Before their untimely accident, they sent me a tape. I think it's what the new department is going after. End station. An associate at the BND. Maybe the last one I can trust. Will ensure its delivery to you. Is anyone out there? Can anyone hear me? I do not know how long I have been here. There are no days to count. Only an endless twilight. Like a dream that keeps shifting whenever I try to focus on it. There are some strangely beautiful sights here. Great glowing gems, luminous creatures that float on the mist. But beauty means little when you are always being hunted. I should never have gone near that shimmering light. I should never have touched it. I thought it was a sign from God. <laughs> there is no God here. There is no God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, it is me, Mariska. I do not know if my words reach you anymore. I do not know if you care at all about the damned. For that is surely what I am. Damned. And I just want to know. Why, Lord? What did I do to end up here? It is not the hell I expected, no lake of fire, only a cold, perpetual half-night that somehow seems even worse. Dead men wander this land, feasting on the living, if you can call it living. And I fear they may be. Lord, they are coming. I beg you, protect me. Deliver me from this place. I should not be here. I should not. <sighs> okay. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> Think it through. <sighs> Reason it out. <clears throat> I've met quite a few others who got trapped here like me. And every time, every single time, the question comes up, are we in hell or not? I mean, sure, this has to be hell, right? There's dead people, the demons, I feel as far from God as you can get. I even thought I saw ghosts here. But now I'm thinking maybe they're just folks back home, and, and, and somehow I'm seeing them through the veil that separates our worlds. Which brings me to the thought I just, I, just, I just can't get out of my mind. What if there is no hell? What, what, if, what if this place is just a place? <laughs> what if people came here before and, and got out? And, and that's how we got the whole idea of hell in the first place. I hope someone out there can hear this. I'm not quite certain this device even works. You see, I'm an historian. I was touring ancient sites in Peru when it all went dark. Suddenly, I, I'm... I'm in this jigsaw landscape. This hodgepodge of creatures and artifacts. 
like a collision of cultures and eras. I've seen medieval structures alongside 21st century buildings. I've seen ancient storybook creatures and mechanical monsters straight from a science fiction novel. And the thought I cannot seem to shake now is that the universe has a dumping ground for things that go bump in the night. Others I've encountered assume this is hell, but it's worse. It's the dustbin of history. It's the rubbish dump of time. When the universe is through with you, this is your final stop. Confession time. <laughs> this one's gonna sound a little nutsoid, but stay with me. Please, stay with me. So, I've noticed that ever since I landed in this place, well, I've noticed some changes in me, physically, and hey, I am not crazy. Do not call me crazy, but mentally, too. It's bad enough when my skin started to wither. I, I look part alligator. My nails are growing like crazy, and my teeth. What worries me more is how calm I am about it. I, I mean, at first I panicked, but the more I change, the less I mind. Plus, I am not as afraid of things I run into. I even... Don't judge me. Don't you fucking judge me. I've... I've eaten one or two of them. I go to eat something. I... Anyway, I don't know if it's the fog or those glowy crystal things, but this place changes you. Not all at once, but I don't think I could go back now. Even if I knew how.